Hello, my name is Andy, and I am the village idiot, and I'm armed with a car and a GoPro, and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Welcome back to the East Riding of Yorkshire. Now today I've got a village for you that is absolutely beautiful. I've never set foot in this place before and once again I'm wondering why. The bright sunshine is just basically showing this village off in all its glory and that's what I like about it. It's got so many features that just ooze charm and character and this is Sancton. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Sancton is a village and civil parish in the East Riding of Yorkshire, situated approximately two miles southeast of the market town of Market Wheaton on the A1034 road. Its parish boundaries touch in a clockwise direction from due north, Market Wheaton, Cherry Burton, Newbold and South Cliff. It's governed by Sancton Parish Council and it also falls within the Wolds Wheaton Ward of East Riding of Yorkshire Council. Much like neighbouring Newbold, there's only one Sancton in the entire country, so you can't get it mixed up with anything else. This building in front of us here, that's the old post office. The civil parish is formed by the village of Sancton and the hamlet of Houghton, which lies to the west. There's also a very small hamlet called Hesselskew, and that's not even marked on the map. The 2011 census found a wide range of occupations, including farming, gamekeeping and hospitality, as well as commuters working in education, health, construction and commerce living here. Sancton has a long history as shown by archaeological discoveries of a Romano-British farmstead and two cemeteries with urn burials dating to Anglo-Saxon times. A 6th century pagan cemetery was discovered at Grange Farm. The discovery of 69 pottery urns was recorded on an OS map in 1854. Sancton was mentioned in the Doomsday Book as Santon or Sotun and the name translates to mean Sand Town. That's in reference to the dry, sandy nature of the Wolds in this part of East Yorkshire. The Doomsday Book also records a church at Sancton. Prior to this, the Vale Sancton sits within was a route for Neolithic settlers up to the dry land of the Wolds. Sancton's claim to fame comes in the form of a horse's cart or carriage that was found in one of the surrounding fields. These days, it can be seen in London's History Museum. The village is associated with the Jackson family. Thomas Jackson was born in Sancton, the son of an agricultural labourer. He became president of the Wesleyan Conference in 1838 and again in 1849. I'll tell you one thing that's become a challenge ever since I got this tripod. These gates, because somehow I have to open the gate with one hand whilst holding my tripod in the other. It's uh, quite a challenge these days. The benefits of the 20th century were slow to arrive in Sancton as older villagers can recall pupils collecting buckets of water from the village pump to deliver to their school. Even at the onset of World War I, Sancton was still essentially a farming community of arable and livestock farming where farmers were allowed to graze cattle by the roadside. In more recent times, Sancton has seen a wind farm be introduced into the area on Sancton Hill. This is a 10 megawatt wind generation scheme thanks to developer REG Wind Power. It consists of five turbines which are expected to generate approximately 27 gigawatt hours per annum. There's a picture of the wind farm in today's picture bit. According to the 2011 UK Census, Sancton Parish had a population of 286, a reduction of one person on the 2001 figure of 287. It covers just over 8 square kilometres. The two combined figures mean Sancton has a population density of 31.24, one of the lowest in the entire East Riding. This one's also 99% white British ethnically. 
This was a rather surprising find. I fully expected Sanctum's house price to be quite high. In fact, the last 12 month sales gives us an average price of just £191,000. Now, as normal, there's a bus timetable here. However, according to Sancton's parish plan, which you'll find on the village website, there's only one bus service a week on Friday mornings. The Star Inn next. It was once a coaching inn and a haunt for the local farming community. It was formerly referred to as a grubby roadside boozer, and now it's an award-winning gastropub. Whilst there may not be an actual post office now, given that we've already come across the old post office, Sancton does still possess a post box. Once again, there's no book exchange in the phone box, fans of those. In much the same way as Newbold, it's where the defibrillator is located. Sancton also has an active village hall, providing activities throughout the year. The village hall was restored and reopened in March 2012, with the support of the local community. Sancton has an outstanding children's nursery located within the old school building. This was rebuilt in 1870 as a memorial to Thomas and Samuel Jackson. Now here's something you don't see in every village, an actual village car park. So if I'd have known about this, I would have actually parked here, but I've parked on Beverly Lane, which is just as good. But this is a, a designated space for parking within the village. If all villages had one of these, I would be a happy man. The Parish Church All Saints is a listed building with a 15th century octagonal tower, which is a unique feature in the UK. It has a thriving congregation with popular all-age services. The church became part of Watton Priory in 1150 and remained under its influence until the dissolution of the monasteries in 1534. The Archbishop of York appointed the first vicar in 1549. Three bells are hung in the tower, two date from the 16th century and one was recast in 1898. Electric clangers have been fitted which give the original sound of the bells on the hour. The chancel and nave were rebuilt by Atkinsons of York in 1869, 70 and 71 in early English Gothic style. There's significant use of older stones from the dismantled 14th and 15th century building. And then we have the Methodist Chapel which was built in 1815 and enlarged in 1840. This continues to hold well-attended weekly services. Here we have a village pond which was used as drinking water for farm animals. These days it's a lovely spot at the centre of the village under a tree. Parish notice board anyone? April 17th? Remember that pump I mentioned earlier? Well, it may not be used as one anymore since Sancton dragged itself into the 20th century, but it still stands right next to the pond. Now these next two things are almost identical to one another, but I've got no idea what they are. They look like fire hydrants, the sort of thing you'd find on any given city sidewalk in America. What are these things? My best guess is some other kind of water pump. I found two, one near the village pump and one on the corner of Beverly Lane, but who knows, there may well be more. Next to the church, as far as I understand it, is a Roman Catholic cemetery. It looks like it's been recently cleared, as some of the photos I found of it showed it to be very overgrown. At the back of it is a tall, shrine-like structure, which has on the floor a slab reading, I pray for the soul of Philip Langdale. We'll talk some more about him in a short while. And while we're on the subject of memorials, here's a little plaque to the memory of three members of the Sancton Gardening Club on a fence next to the village hall. Okay, there's one more thing I want to show you here in Sancton, and to do that I need to get into the car and drive down Houghton Lane. But before that, you guys need a picture bit. This is a very small village, I'm not sure what I'm going to put in this one, there might not be much out there, but let's see what I came up with.
To finish with, we're out to the west of Sancton and we're looking at a large body of water close to Houghton Hall. This is Sancton Reservoir. To the untrained eye, you'd never know this was here if you drove down Houghton Lane because it's raised high above the road and it looks, from ground level at least, just like a little hill. The reservoir forms part of a wider network of lakes and some streams in this area which cross the parkland of Houghton Hall, which you can see from here even though it's far too far away to film. Houghton Hall was designated a Grade 1 listed building in 1952. It's a Georgian country mansion set in an estate of 7,800 acres, and that's an estate that includes Sancton Village. Also within the estate are the vestigial remains of the ancient hamlet of Houghton. The hall was built between 1765 and 1758 by Philip Langdale to the designs of Thomas Atkinson. If that Langdale name is familiar, well it should be thanks to a previous episode. Houghton Hall was built for Marmaduke Langdale, the 5th Baron Langdale, and the grounds were landscaped with a lake. The Roman Catholic parish of Market Wheaton was founded from the domestic chapel of the Langdale family at Houghton Hall. The chapel, built in 1829, was demolished in 1957. And here's a fun fact for you, the Vale of York Polo Club was formerly located on the Houghton Hall estate. And there you go, that's the parish of Sancton, a nice small one here in the East Riding today, but one that's certainly very beautiful. It's a pretty little village. Hello. <laughs> Cowboys are getting on the act. Do you want to say hello, my friend? What do you think of Sancton? No answer. <laughs> Blooming locals. <laughs> Anyway, time for me to move on to my next one here in the East Riding of Yorkshire. I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and this has been the Parish of Sancton, and I'm out.